Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create this 3D puzzle. First, we'll create this simple square nine piece puzzle. Let's open a new document. Set the stroke to none, select the rectangle tool and draw a square. Let's pick a different color. Be sure your smart guides are on. Switch to the ellipse tool. Now click on this intersection and draw a circle. With the circle still selected, press the letter R for the Rotate tool. While you are holding down the Alt key, click in the center of this black square to set the rotation point. Set the angle to 90 degrees and then click Copy. Now press Ctrl D a couple times to repeat the last step. Select everything. Now choose the Shape Builder tool and while you are holding down the Alt key, click on the shapes outside the black square to delete them. With everything still selected, go to Object, Repeat and choose Grid. Make sure there is no gaps between squares. To do this, set the horizontal and vertical spacing in grid values to zero. Let's create nine squares. Move the right handle so it passes this grid line and the bottom handle so it passes this grid line. With the grid still selected, go to Object and choose Expand. Click OK. Next, go to Layers and open the sublayers of layer 1. Select the Clipping Path layer and then press the Delete key on your keyboard. And now we are ready to modify our grid. Be sure the grid is selected and then switch to the Shape Builder tool. Next, open the Swatches window and choose any color that you like. I'm going to use this color group I've created beforehand. If you wish to use the same colors as mine, here are their values. Select the first color and create the first puzzle piece. It helps to have a sketch for reference. Select the second color and create another puzzle piece. And so on. If you would like your puzzle to look as solved, then leave it as it is. I'm going to pull out one of the pieces to the side for a different effect. Next, we'll add a 3D effect. First, switch to the Selection tool. Click on the puzzle to select it. Next, go to Effect, 3D and Materials and choose Extrude and Bevel. Here we can experiment with different settings to create the 3D object we are looking for. We can increase the depth. We can add a bevel effect. Modify its width and height. We can change the rotation around X, Y and Z axis using the sliders or using the rotation widget. We can also choose a specific rotation from the presets. We can go to Lighting and adjust the height, for example. To change the position of any of the pieces, first switch to the Direct Selection tool and now click on a desired piece and move it. Now let's adjust our puzzle a little bit more. With everything selected, click on this arrow to open the render settings. Be sure the ray tracing is on. Select the Render as Vector option and then click Render. We can close this window. Before we can create a vector object, first we need to expand this group. Go to Object and choose Expand Appearance. Let's open the sublayers of this group. You will notice that Illustrator creates a non-native art layer and lots of paths. 
The non-native art is an image file which we will use for reference. Select the non-native art image, move it to the side and scale it. Now select everything, right click and choose ungroup. Next, select the non-native art image and lock it. We can do it by using the layers panel or go to object, lock and choose selection. I would highly recommend to memorize this keyboard shortcut. And here is our locked layer. Next, we will create shapes and apply different shades of orange to replicate this puzzle piece. Before we do this, first we need to create this missing shape. Let's select this rectangle from the back that we don't need and align it with this curved edge. Be sure there is no gaps or you won't be able to use the Shape Builder tool later on. Let's copy and paste this shape to the other side to create another missing shape. Be sure it is aligned with this curve. And we need one more extra shape over here. Now we are ready to create shapes. Select everything. Switch to the Shape Builder tool. Pick any color that you like. And click on this area to create the first shape. Now repeat this with the other two shapes. Switch to the Selection tool, select this shape and be sure the stroke is set to None. Now repeat this with the other two shapes. We can delete these three shapes. Next, we will add color to these shapes to match the orange puzzle piece. First, select this shape. Now press the letter I for the eyedropper tool or select it from the toolbar panel and click on this orange to select the same color shade. Instead of constantly switching between the selection tool and the eyedropper tool, first hold down the control key and then select the next shape. Now release the control key and pick a corresponding color shade from the image. And again, press and hold down the control key to select the next shape, release the control key and pick the next shade. And again, I'm going to speed up this video, but you should take as much time as you need. Let's zoom in. Many times we will need to bring our shapes to the front or send them to the back. To do this, first select your shape and then right click, arrange and choose a desired option. In my case, I'm going to move this shape to the front. We can also use the keyboard shortcuts to speed up our work. If you click on a useless path like this one, just press the Ctrl and number 2 keys on your keyboard to lock it. To make our puzzle piece more realistic, we can also add gradients. Let's select this shape. Open the gradient panel. Be sure the fill is on top. Choose the white and black gradient and press the letter G to show the gradient annotator on the screen. Now double click on this color stop to open the options window. Select the color picker and click on the corresponding color shade to apply it. Now repeat this with the other color stop. Let's adjust the gradient's direction. Now repeat this with any other shape you would like to add a gradient to. And continue to apply colors to other puzzle pieces. 
Next, we will delete all useless paths. Press the Ctrl and A keys on your keyboard to select everything. Then go to Object and select Unlock All or use the keyboard shortcut instead. Let's lock the non-native art layer. Now switch to the Direct Selection tool and select one of the useless paths. Next go to Select, Same and choose Appearance. This selects all paths at once. Now press the Delete key on your keyboard. Next check if any of the shape's position needs to be rearranged. And finally apply the gradient to the remaining shapes. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.